here you can see we've got some spurge coming in in different spots and it's actually all over the the area that we've got here and get rid of acorns because they're not supposed to be here. Our crabgrass here should be taken out fairly easy by a 2,4-D as it's not grown too far. Here you go, here's some more ground ivy that's trying to move into our Bermuda patch. So we're going to go ahead and knock that out today and uh, see if we can get some 2,4-D to do the job for us. Over here in this area, we've got some weeds coming in right here, but the reason that we have such a dark brown patch here is because we use glyphosate later in the germination, germination process to take out some of the stuff that we didn't get with our first application. Over here in the tall fescue, it's just not looking good. We gotta take all these weeds out. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Bermuda grass and we're gonna cut it down to two inches to get everything about level. And we're gonna take the tall fescue and mow it at four inches and try to get everything on the same plane. Alright guys, so our mixing rate for the cross check is going to be one fluid ounce per thousand square feet and we've got 2,500 square feet. So in turn, after doing the simple math, we're going to be using two and a half fluid ounces in this application today. For our 2,4-D application, we're going to be using one and one half ounces per thousand square feet and again we've got 2,500 square feet. So we're going to be mixing four and a half fluid ounces and the two gallons that we have here. our blanket application of cross check and red zone 2 and this is what it should look like when you're done nice even blue coating so here we are week four it's been three days since we put down our red zone 2 and our cross check and it's actually worked out pretty well uh, it's knocked out pretty much all the weeds that I can see and uh, there's no crabgrass it was early enough on that we took out the crabgrass we did get some damage in the Bermuda grass, but uh, it's not completely dead. We've definitely got a lot of green out there. So very, very happy with the outcome. We took care of a large portion of our ground ivy about a week ago, and as you can see, it just completely killed it all off. We used Prosecutor and also Tracking Dye. And Prosecutor is glyphosate at 41% and it just knocks everything out that it touches and it did a very very good job as you can see here and basically our goal was to keep the ground ivy from moving over here into our turf grass behind us this area over here hasn't been growing too well and I believe it's because it's not getting quite enough water might have gone a little light on the seeding as well however as you can tell, it's in almost a circular pattern to where the sprinkler is right over here. So I believe this right here is going to be due to the lack of water. And here we are back with our good friend Melorganite, which is a 540 NPK. And I'm about to tell you guys what exactly that means. So before we figure out exactly 
how much we need we need to make sure that you guys know one thing what these numbers right here stand for okay these are going to be percents this is five percent four percent zero percent um, of these letters and what these stand for is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so the next thing we're going to figure out is melorganite comes in 36 pound bags so that means that each bag is 5 percent nitrogen and 4 percent phosphorus our next step is going to be taking 36 times 0 0.05 and since we're lazy we're going to do it on our calculator over here. 36 times 0 0.05 is 1.8. Which, if you were listening earlier in the truck, we're going to use those same numbers. Say the soil sample comes back and the lab says that you need to put down 0.9 pounds per thousand square feet in your lawn to get it up into the green range. Okay. Well, that means that this divided by 2, 1.8 divided by 2, equals 0.9. Now, each bag says that it takes care of 2,500 square feet, but since you have already figured out how much you need to put down, we're going to disregard this. And the good thing about melorganite is it's an organic you can put more down than it says as this number here is just a recommendation it's not gonna harm your lawn if anything it's gonna store the nitrogen in the ground for later so I know some of you are thinking Jared that that was way too easy and you're right it was we're gonna throw a curveball let's go ahead and say your results come back and the lab says that you need to put down three quarters of a pound per thousand square feet okay and from our drawing we did we had 112,500 square feet and the way that you're gonna figure out how many bags you need is you're gonna take your total square footage and divide it by 1,000 which is gonna give you 112.5 alright and then you're gonna multiply this number right here by this which is going to give you 85. Actually, it's it's 84.2 or something like that, but we're going to round up to 85 just to make the math a little bit easier. Uh, so, continuing on, we're going to do 36 pounds is how many pounds are in each bag of melorganite, okay? And you're going to multiply that by the percent of nitrogen that's in each bag. If you multiply these two together, you get 1.8. After that, you're going to take your number that you got up here, which is 85, and you're going to divide it by your number here, which is 1.8, and that's going to give you 47.2, but we're going to round up to 48, and there you have it. You're going to use 48 bags of melorganite to cover this amount at 3 quarters of a pound per thousand square feet. I know it seems kind of tricky, but again, once you get used to it, it's simple. I'm about to stress to you how important safety is, and why I always say safety is paramount. I just bought some wasp and bee spray from Lowe's because that's where I like to go is Lowe's and Home Depot. I go there sometimes too. I'm not picking one over the other but uh, I got this from Lowe's. On the top of it it says tear off tab. Well I went to tear the tab off and it shot straight back into my eye and on my face and all over my shirt had I not had my eyewear on 
it would have gone straight into my eyes. It, my eyes are fine. I had to change shirts, wash my face off. Like I always say, safety is paramount. If I didn't have my safety glasses on, I'd be going to the emergency room right now. Think about it. And once again, tie your stuff down. Don't be lazy. Back here in the truck bed, again, tie your stuff down. Don't be lazy. It'll fly out. I'm telling you, this, this stuff's going to fly out. Maybe not today, maybe not next week, maybe not even this year, but eventually, it's going to happen. Also, another thing, if you don't tie your stuff down, I don't know how it is in other states, but in South Carolina, if you don't have your stuff tied down, you can get a ticket. You can get a traffic violation for that and go to court and have to pay money. Nobody likes to pay money. I don't. I mean, y'all might like to, but I certainly don't. So I tie my stuff down. You should too. Also in South Carolina, well, you have to be a certified commercial pesticide applicator and you actually have to go through Clemson University then go through the state to get that license you have to take the Clemson University's class then you have to go take the test once you complete your written test then it'll be at least two tests you've got a core test and a category test or however many categories you want to and the difference between the categories are say turf management uh, you've got your uh, aquatic herbicide management, you've got uh, interior pesticide management, uh, let's see, there's, there's a bunch of them, there's probably about 12 or so, but once you, once you finish your test, you then have to get a special kind of insurance. You have to have business insurance, which is always great to have, but then you have to have pesticide application insurance. Once you have your proof of financial liability, which would be your business insurance and pesticide applicators insurance, then you take all that paperwork, including the results from your test, and you send it off to the state, along with some money. Oh yes, paying money again. So the written test was actually not that bad. It was actually a computerized test. It wasn't that bad, but it was $100 for the core test in one category. It was a really good course though I uh, read through the books really good knowledge I would highly recommend going out and getting that if you can okay so you've passed your test you have your insurance and you have sent off all of your paperwork to the state now what well it's gonna take about two weeks for them to process all that but you should get it in the mail within two weeks and once you get that in the mail it comes with your license and two state stickers as I showed you earlier now I don't exactly know what the guidelines are on placement of the stickers and I'm sure it tells you somewhere. I didn't see it in the packet that they sent me, but I put mine. Right there on the side of the truck where it's plainly visible. Some people put it on the back windshield. In South Carolina, you're not actually supposed to have anything on the back windshield. So a body panel is the best place to put it so it doesn't obstruct your views at all. I'm Jared Bingle, the Lawn Care Specialist, and I hope you guys have a great day. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.